In the last lecture, we were talking of surface tension. We learnt that surface tension is caused because the molecular forces acting on molecules on the surface of the liquid, they are not all balanced and therefore, the liquid surface is stretched and this stretched surface has a force along it uh, called surface tension. In this lecture, we shall talk of angle of contact and then we shall find the excess pressure into drops and bubbles and we shall also see the capillary rise of liquids. Start with the angle of contact. You see, if this is the vessel in which water is contained, this is the water surface, there is air above it and then if I draw a tangent to this surface, then the angle between that tangent and glass wall is called the angle of contact. This one is the angle of contact and it is conventionally measured through the liquid. Here again, there is water, there is air and this angle, if I draw a tangent to the surface, this angle is the angle of contact and it is measured through the liquid. And the angle of contact does not depend whether this beaker is uh, straight or tilted, it does not matter. The angle of contact between water and mercury, for example, in the case of water, the angle of contact is about 30 degrees. If you take mercury, then the surface is like this, as we have discussed in the last lecture, and the tangent is like this, and therefore, the angle of contact is this, measured through the liquid. And this angle of contact the mercury and glass and air is about 130 degrees. Here again, you see the same thing. There is a mercury drop on the glass plate and this angle is the angle of contact. The angle of contact determines whether a liquid will wet a surface or not. Let us take glass for example. If water is able to spread on glass, it will wet it. If it is not able to spread, then it will not. And the angle of contact determines whether the liquid can wet the solid or not. And if the angle of contact is less than 90 degrees, it will wet. And it will wet more if the angle is smaller. If the angle of contact is larger than 90 degrees, then it will not spread on the solid and therefore, it will not wet. Soaps and detergents as we discussed earlier also are made to have small contact angles, so that they can spread over soiled surfaces of clothes. If we go by the angle of contact, if it is less than 90 degrees, then, then the liquid will wet. In the case of mercury, it is more than 90 degrees and therefore, mercury will not wet. So, what happens to mercury? If it falls on a glass plate, it will break up into small spherical drops. Let us know a few more things about the angle of contact. Angle of contact it decreases when a soluble impurity is added to water. Say you add salt or sugar which is soluble in water, then the surface tension uh, or the angle of contact decreases. Angle of contact decreases when water is heated. When you heat water, the angle of contact decreases. As said above, the angle of contact involving solids and liquids is an indicator of the wettability of the solid by the liquid. Whether the liquid will be able to wet the solid or not. This is an interesting case. Surface tension causes liquids to form bubbles and drops and these bubbles trap air as you know. If you must have played with soap bubbles, they trap air inside and this trapped air can become a source of oxygen for some organisms. There is an organism called water spider and this water spider is a species which always lives under water. So, how does it get oxygen? It carries with it a bubble held by hair on its abdomen and legs for its own supply of air. It is just as you are going to Mount Everest carrying a cylinder of oxygen with you. It is obvious that the pressure inside drops and bubbles will be higher than the pressure outside. Otherwise, they will be crushed by the pressure from outside. If you have played with soap bubbles, you will remember that you have to blow air or apply pressure to break a drop into bubbles. That is the source of excess pressure inside a bubble. But how much higher is the pressure inside? Let us calculate. Suppose we have a bubble here and P i is the pressure inside 
and P O is the pressure from outside and R is the radius of this bubble. Now, since the pressure inside is higher, it keeps pressing on its surface and tries to expand the surface. Let us say the expansion takes place by delta R. Then the increase in volume because of this increase in radius delta R is 4 pi R squared delta R. And the work done in this process is 4 pi R squared delta R into P because P times dV, P i times P o the pressure difference times dV is the work done and therefore, the work done is 4 pi R squared into pressure difference into the increase in the radius. Recall that the surface tension is also defined as the surface energy per unit area. So, if S is the energy per unit area, then the extra surface creates extra energy which is stored in the surface. And what is the extra energy? That is equal to delta W. And what is the extra energy that is required is S times delta A, where delta A is the extra surface created. And what is delta A? Delta A is 8 pi R delta R. So, we have the equation, the work done 4 pi R squared into the pressure difference into delta R is equal to the S delta A that is S times 8 pi R delta R. And from this equation, we get the pressure difference that is P i minus P o, P inside minus P o outside is 2 S by R. That means, the inside pressure is in excess of the outside pressure by an amount 2 S by R where R is, is the radius of the drop. Bubble will have two surfaces, one inside, one outside. Therefore, the increase would be 4 S by R for a bubble, because there are two surfaces, inside surface, outside surface. For the drop, there is just one surface, and therefore, the excess pressure is just 2 S by R. By a similar process, we can show that, in fact, we I explained to you that the surface of water is concave upwards. And we can show that the pressure on the concave side is higher than the pressure on the convex side by the same argument that we just carried. And the excess pressure is 2 S by R. That is, pressure on the concave side is higher than the pressure on the convex side by 2 S by R. I have just explained that the pressure inside a drop is in excess by an amount 2 S by R, where R is the radius of the drop. And a bubble has two surfaces, one outer, one inner, and therefore, the excess pressure inside a bubble is 4 S by R. Suppose we have water in a beaker, and there is a drop of water on just touching the surface, and there is a bubble just inside. What happens? You see, remember the bubble inside the liquid has only one surface that is the inner surface. Therefore, the excess pressure inside the bubble which is inside the liquid is 2 S by R because inside the liquid bubble has only one surface. And this drop also has pressure which is greater in the inside by an amount 2 S by R. If they are of the same size, then the excess pressure inside is the same in a drop near the surface and in a bubble near the surface. If you have two bubbles, one smaller, one larger, bring them into contact by a nozzle or by a cock and open the cock, what will happen? You see, this is a smaller bubble. The pressure inside is higher because it is inversely proportional radius. So, it is higher pressure here and lower pressure here. So, the air will go into this and this bubble will grow and this bubble will actually become smaller in size. Now, let us assume that there is a bubble somewhere inside the liquid at a depth h. So, what is the pressure outside? The pressure outside this is the pressure of atmosphere on the surface plus the pressure of this liquid column which is h rho g. So, the total pressure outside this bubble is h rho g plus the atmospheric pressure P atom. What is the pressure inside? 
the pressure inside must be higher by an amount 2 s by r. Therefore, the pressure inside is 2 s by r plus pressure outside that is 2 s by r plus h rho g plus the atmospheric pressure. And from this equation you can calculate the, the depth at which a, a bubble of a particular radius would be in equilibrium. Suppose we have a nozzle, this is a question which is asked many times. You have a nozzle and you want to create bubbles inside water and the radius of the bubble is given what kind of pressure you would acquire to create those bubbles. So, it is very simple. The nozzle must create the required excess pressure. When you blow into the nozzle, the nozzle should create necessary extra pressure inside the bubble. And what is that extra pressure? It is equal to 2 s by r. So, you can calculate what extra pressure you need. Just plug in the values of s and r and you will find that you require in this case 72.7 Newton per meter square pressure inside the nozzle to be able to create bubbles of this size. This is very interesting and this is discussed in very few textbooks. You see, you have a liquid placed in a beaker or some other vessel and you dip a glass plate, a glass slide for example. And when you want to take this glass slide outside water, you want to pull it up, then what happens? As you pull it up, the surface of water clings to the surface of glass and this is what happens. When you pull it up, then the surface becomes like this along the glass plate. That means, the force of surface tension would act downwards along the length of this and the periphery of this or the, or the total length is twice width plus the thickness 2 w plus t that is the total length which is in contact with water. S is the surface tension of water and therefore, the force required is twice w plus t into s. You see understand this normally we say that the force of surface tension is along the surface and we think it is along the horizontal surface. It is not always so. In this case, the surface of water has become like this and therefore, the surface is acting down, the force of surface tension is acting downwards and it is acting all along this periphery of the slide which is 2 w plus t. And if you multiply this by the surface tension, then this gives the force which is required to pull this uh, glass plate out of water. You see, this is our common experience that when a narrow glass tube is dipped in water, the liquid rises in the tube. On the other hand, in a glass tube dipped in mercury, the liquid level goes down, it gets depressed. This phenomenon is called capillarity. That is, if you dip a glass tube in water, the water rises. If you dip a glass tube in mercury, then the mercury surface gets depressed as shown here. What is the reason? What causes this phenomenon? Let us try to understand. You see, I explained to you the meniscus of water is concave upwards and I also explained to you the angle of contact theta. Now, this is concave because the molecules in the glass wall, they attract the molecules of water near the wall and they get pulled upwards. Suppose the net adhesive force, net force between the glass molecules and the water molecules is T. Then this force T pulls the water molecules upwards and gives this shape to the meniscus. I show you in expanded form. These are the molecules on the glass wall. These are molecules very near the glass wall and if they are in equilibrium, then this force T that is the net force due to the adhesive forces must be equal to the force of surface tension. If these molecules have already assumed the shape concave shape, they must be in equilibrium 
and this t must be equal to s. Now, the vertical component t cos theta here this vertical component is t cos theta. This t cos theta pulls water up and t we have seen must be magnitude wise must be equal to s. So, therefore, the force pulling the water molecules up is the see the rim has a perimeter 2 pi r. So, it is 2 pi r and the force is s cos theta. Therefore, this is the net force trying to pull the water upwards and if the water rises to a height h, then it has pressure h rho g and the force is into the area of cross section of the tube which is pi r squared. So, we have these two forces which keep the water in balance and from these two equations we get h is equal to 2 s cos theta by r rho g where rho is the density of water and r is the radius of the tube. So, for ordinary silica glass and water the contact angle is essentially 0 is very small. Therefore, the above relation becomes this relation cos theta becomes equal to 1 and therefore, it becomes h equal to 2 s by r rho g. Notice that if the contact angle is greater than 90 degrees then h becomes negative. That means, instead of the liquid rising the liquid dip gets depressed it goes inside the tube. Now, there is another way in which this can be explained. You see you have again a vessel containing water and a tube dipping into it. The pressure at this level at the same level must be equal we know all that that the pressure in a liquid at the same height is always equal. So, pressure here is all equal and here the pressure is atmospheric therefore, the pressure at this inside the tube at this level is also p. Pressure from outside which is acting on the water column is also the atmospheric pressure and we have seen that this pressure is larger than the pressure on the convex side and it is this difference of pressure which pulls water up. P outside is atmospheric, P inside is 2 s by r. So, this is the total pressure P minus 2 s by r add to this the pressure of this column which is rho g h and for this to be equal to P it is obvious that rho g h must be equal to 2 s by r that is h must be equal to 2 s by r rho g. Again pressure outside is p, inside is p minus 2 s by r and if you add to that the pressure of this column which has risen then the pressure of this column inside becomes p minus 2 s by r plus rho g h and this must be equal to p. So, if you this can happen only if 2 s by r is equal to rho g h or h is equal to this. Same thing happens with mercury. The only difference is that the mercury goes down in the tube rather than going up and this equation can also help us in determining the surface tension. In fact, in laboratories this method is used to determine the surface tension of water. So, what you do is you dip a small tube and then uh, measure the rise of the liquid column, measure the radius of the tube and then use this equation S equal to h r rho g by 2 and you will get the surface tension. This is a question here. In an experiment in the laboratory, a capillary tube of diameter 2 millimeter was dipped in water. The water rose in the capillary to a height of 1.5 centimeter. Find the surface tension of water. So, just apply this formula and plug in the values h is given, rho is given, g we know, r is given therefore, you can find s and s for water is 0 0.073 joule meter square. You know remember surface tension is energy per unit area. So, joule by meter square. In the next lecture, we shall take other properties of liquids such as viscosity and see its effects.